You're listening to the DC Comics Chronicles, where we cover every adventure from the streets of Gotham to the skies of Metropolis and into the depths of Atlantis. With your hosts, Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast. Welcome to another episode of the DC Comics Chronicles. As always, I'm your host, Adam. And with me is my co-host, the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? Hey, what's up, comic book fans? It's the podcasting machine, the big nerd in green, the man whose ring runs on fanboy energy, and aliens, elections, and earthquakes. Oh my, we're back to cover Superman and Lois. Indeed we are. Um, it's been uh, it's been a while, uh, well, since the premiere episode of season two. Uh, we've got three uh, more to cover today. Uh, because uh, Superman and Lois is currently on a hiatus due to the Olympics, so we thought, mm-hmm. what what better time than to catch up uh, than during a hiatus? So you know that's uh, that's what we're gonna do, and, uh, and we've got some interesting episodes uh, to talk about with the the, the viewers and listeners. Mm-hmm. So uh, Donnie, when uh, when we last left Superman and Lois, where did we leave off? What's what's happened since we last? Well, we only talked so, about the premiere, and some things were set up with Tal Ro, and there's something happening beneath the surface of the Earth here. Mm-hmm. We saw that some villain is underneath the Earth, some big threat to Superman's family, as well as uh, Jordan having some problems. Yeah. So, uh, and there's also an election that we're going to talk about here that's happening in town. Yeah, let's hope it's not uh, rigged or, or anything like that. You know. let, 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 yeah, let's Fraudulent see. and all that, you know. Uh, where would the where would the where would the bots be coming from to to, to, to ruin the election uh, in 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 the the DC canon? What would, what would it be the uh, where would they? Well, they would have the, to come from LexCorp somewhere, I would think. Deep beneath Le, yeah, LexCorp, LexCorp yeah. would be involved. Maybe the Dominators, you know. If we're right. talking extraterrestrial threats, you know, maybe they they yeah. get in on the action, you know. So yeah, or maybe Mister Mixelplex, Mister Mixelplex, just for yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah, or maybe we'll get a we'll, we'll get Larflees, you know. <laughs> just all they would have to say is that president or or mayor or whatever is a title, and he would want it. Yeah, well, there you because go. you remember once in the comics that they they mentioned uh, Carol Ferris being the queen of the Zamorans, and he's like, I want to be queen. Yeah, or, or remember that time? <laughs> remember the Christmas ep- uh, issue? Oh yes, I have it. Was it. like I want. He wanted everything, and I'm like, uh, yeah, yes, I, yes. I can't blame him. Yes, and that's kind of like, like me with the list, Donnie. <laughs> I'm like, oh her, yeah, she's on the list. She's on. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons he came to Earth. He's like, I know about the gift giver, Hal Jordan. Yeah. Hal's like, who are you talking about? He's like, I know about Santa Claus, and you're not gonna lie about him to me. <laughs> <laughs> And right uh, now, people are like, what does this have to do with Superman and Lois? <laughs> absolutely nothing, but we can deviate to different topics because it's our show. That's right. We can do what we want on here. That's why. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to Superman and Lois. Um, yeah, so we're, uh, we're, let's start with uh, episode two. Uh, yes, episode two, the ties that bind. And so it opens up with kind of this, you know, heartwarming breakfast. With uh, the with the um, the Kents and their new guests, of course, being uh, from you know the other Earth, and so there's this nice family breakfast. But we're also seeing that Clark is having some kind of like neurological disturbance. He's seeing visions. He's losing like control of his body. He's not able to stand up all the time under right. like this duress. Whatever it is, it's almost like a psychological attack. But we're still not exactly sure at this point what is the nature of this thing that he's undergoing. Yeah, it was. It's uh, it's pretty interesting that you know they kind of set it up at the end of the first episode, uh, and it, it sort of carries over here. You know, they set up the idea that he is linked to whatever is underneath the the earth. Mm-hmm. Which we thought was one particular person, but we find out later that it's an well, there, different person. Yes, there was definitely some misdirection here. 
I want to point out that it seems that not this like the ones that those those anti uh, Masters of the Universe fans claimed about Kevin Smith right now. Oh. None of that stupid garbage, right? No, yes, like, yes. Misdirection for the purpose of you know, yeah. tell, I, telling yes. a story and hiding a, a reveal like Kevin <laughs> Smith did. Kind of the same thing. Yes, actual good storytelling. There's a reason yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah, just yeah. wanted to throw that in there. Yes. Good good times back in uh, <laughs> back in uh, June, whenever it was. Yeah. So. Um, what we're seeing is that is that uh, Clark, whatever this is, and what I want to talk about here is I think that they're drawing on some old stories, at least are using kind of a template. They're not going exactly beat for beat, but yeah. they're using some of the Reign of the Superman stuff, Reign of the Superman from back in the 90s. And they're using some of that flavor because, you know, we've already seen, you know, John Henry Irons with you know, the suit, and we were led to believe that there was one villain on the way, and they went out of their way, not only to mention the name of Doomsday, but the fact of it, in this episode, we actually see this threat underneath the ground that is breaking out, and you see this massive silhouette that looks like a containment suit, and of course, going back to the Doomsday story, the original story in the comics, The Death of Superman, Doomsday was in a suit like that. So yeah. we're led to believe that this is Doomsday. Yeah, well, if you're just going based off of look, which is, and sort of set up being, uh, you know, in the ground or under the ground or beneath the earth, not under the ground. Yeah, that's what I was trying to go for. Uh, being beneath the earth, that, you know, that's sort of what, what where your mind obviously go, naturally goes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, I I definitely thought it was uh, Doomsday. Well, again, the plan I believe was to make you believe that. Yeah, yeah. They definitely wanted to like steer you in that direction. So, and and, and the way you said, you know, how this is sort of taking bits and pieces mm -hmm. from different comics, but not straight up you know adapting page for page panel for panel right that's pretty much dc's mo across the board mm -hmm. um so and and that's a good thing in my opinion because i don't want um i don't want uh, you know, a word for word, panel for panel adaptation of something I've seen. And, and well, we've seen the death of Superman adapted three different times. Right. No, but even in general with DC, yes. right? You're like, I've read a bunch of these stories. I don't want to just have it regurgitated to me in a different medium. Like, like, right. Use use it, but but make it your own at the same time. Right. Well, that's what I was pointing out, though. There was Superman yeah. Doomsday. There was, you know, the death and the reign of the Superman, the animated movies. And then, of mm. course, we had it in Batman versus Superman. So right, right. Yeah. it's a familiar story to pretty much everyone at this point, even if you don't read comics. Right, 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 right. And so that's why I think that they could draw on that because they would le it would lead viewers to, a to assume we're going in this direction because even people who aren't comic collectors, they would instantaneously think oh doomsday absolutely you know? yeah. especially when you know episode one ended with the big hand coming out of the ground and yeah. the ground shaking you immediately thought somebody of immense power had to be doomsday well it was right? either it was either doomsday or the undertaker in the buried alive match <laughs> one, one of the two uh yeah well and you remember the 94 royal rumble when he came back like five thousand times and ended up fighting half the roster with the salt bucket and yeah, oh, yeah. So you know, they, they, all this wrestling. Is, <laughs> we we gotta we gotta schedule another wrestling podcast. It's been a while. That's schedule. right. That's right. Yeah, we should go back and review. Yeah, some of the old stuff. And right now, again, you know, people are watching this and going, "What are these guys talking about?" <laughs> it's all connected. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's, wrestlers in the '80s were live action superheroes. Damn it. Right. And right. you know, whether you like it or not, that's that's the the the, the way it was back then. That's yeah. the way that that's the. That's the genre that, that that you know Vince McMahon wanted uh, you know to to emulate with certain characters, the Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so 
And so, you know, it all ties together. And it, just look at Ron Mars and, and, and uh, Daryl Banks is one on, on uh, you know, uh, Kyle. In, right, in, Green Lantern, Volume 3. A lot of, lot of wrestling uh, mm-hmm. references and innuendo in there. Yes, yes. Uh, so, I mean, it's all connected. Yes. And if you want to hear more about Green Lantern, you can catch it right here on Multiverse Musings, the vidcast. That's the Emerald Echo podcast available right here, hosted by Adam and myself. And if you actually want us to hear us talk about wrestling... You can do that too because we have one of those shows. So <laughs> where where can they do that, Don? That is Wayback Wrestling Mania, also available right here on YouTube. Wayback look, Wrestling look, Mania. Look at that! I set you up twice in one, two birds, one stone. The whole <laughs> the whole thing, you know. Right. Well, you know, again, we're doing a catch up here, so we have to throw in, you know, a few little things here. I won't yeah. do I won't do the whole condiment routine though because you know that's a little stale, you know. Yep. So yeah, I, yeah, you know that yeah, you know, a little stale, you know. But hey, I'm on a roll. So anyway, all right. So <laughs> see, we have to do shameless plugs and dad jokes here. That's oh yeah. Requirement. It's, it's, all right. Yeah. Okay. Back to the matters at hand. Clark, he is desperate at this point because these visions are increasing in intensity, and he's forced to go speak with Morgan Edge, aka Tal Ro, mm-hmm. to figure out what do I do about these. And Tal Rowe hides the fact that even though he has been um, imprisoned under red sunlight, he still manages to have his abilities at this point. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So we do, you know, Cal at this point starts to learn, Cal, as in Clark, learns yeah. that there is a creature that is causing these earthquakes. Now, again, yeah. we haven't seen the creature at this point, but. Just wait until um, Tugboat shows up. <laughs> With Sorry, the, I, with, I the, couldn't resist. with the little I bracelets, yeah. I couldn't resist. I had to go there. Yeah. Little bracelets. Oh, yeah. I may have ordered one of those back in the day. I can't remember. It's been too probably. long. But anyway. <laughs> no, you now, I would like to say probably. Yeah. So, um, John is actually having some flashbacks of his own. He's thinking a lot about his Lois. We see that he's having a lot of turmoil there. Yeah. And the first uh, Lois to the last. <laughs> there's a lot of different. Yeah, Lo, is it is it? What's the plural of Lois? Is it Loi? Yeah, probably. A Lo- <laughs> I should know since there are a couple of them on my list. I should yeah. have this. I need to know this terminology. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and again, we're seeing also again that Jordan having some relationship problems, and they do get to that a little yeah. bit more. Um, I forget whether it was this episode or the next episode. Um, we learn that it's because his girlfriend had, um, I don't exactly know how to put this. She, she went learned, to camp. Yeah, she went to camp. And, and we she know became, what happens when you go to camp, according well, to the yeah. American Pie franchise. <laughs> she learns that she also likes girls. Right. She kissed a girl. She liked it. Like and she li- said, <laughs> oh, boy. Come on. That's it. And I'm like, hey, me too. <laughs> See, uh, who says you can't relate to people on Superman and Lois? Well, and let me say this. You know how you and I talked about, you know, again, a lot of controversy with the ending of Supergirl because, sure. you know, people oh. wanted, you know, the relate. Okay, yeah. I, I had to bring it up, though, but I I, I, I'm getting at a point here. If later on... She does break up with Jordan for a girl. At least we had some. Contact, there's contact. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's some character development that makes sense. We have some seeds here to say, hey, she's bisexual. Yeah. It's not just something that they're going to pull out of thin air. Right, exactly. So, again, I don't know that they're going to do that. But we now at least know that part about her character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, and you know, from Jordan's perspective, I was like, listen, if you got to lose, at least if she's going to cheat on you or, or be unfaithful, I'd rather it would be with another woman than be with a different another guy. Like, if it was me, <laughs> like, okay. if I lost out to another woman, I'd be like, all right, I can live with that. If it was another guy, I don't know if I'd be all right with that. Well, I mean, you know, you and I, you and I talked about Unless that. Unless it's a multiverse version of me, then, then hey. 
Yeah. <laughs> to the victor go to the spoils. But, you know. Wouldn't that, hey, hey, you know, it might be like, you know, a villainous version of you that did that, like, oh, kind of like reverse Royal flash. I, I would DDT all of them. Everything. <laughs> all my variants, one by one. I'd bring out, I'd bring out the snake. The guitar <laughs> is, uh, I'd use all the weaponry, it'd be good. Cage match, cage match for the, for the, for the ultimate, whoever is the winner of the Multiverse Wide Royal Rumble. <laughs> Yeah, that would be the, that would be the... that would be interesting though to see like twenty five different versions of you from twenty five Earths or so, all fighting to like yeah. have yeah to have yeah like the list is in a briefcase right yeah it's like the it's, it's like the money in the bank right there you go multiverse wife in the um, how would we phrase that we got to come up with a pay per view name for this thing okay. so not only am I creating a list I'm creating pay per view names now for this for this uh, this event. Well, since we're covering three different episodes here, we're going to go ahead and move yeah, on. Any, bleed together. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. Any other comments about rating. this? Give an overall yeah. rating. Yeah. Uh, I look. I liked. I liked the fact that they gave us a little bit more hint on what's underneath the the, the ground, mm -hmm. and they 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 hinted that it was Doomsday, and and <laughs> he looked in that outfit like a like a, a perfect translation of. You know the early appearance of Doomsday. Yeah. And I, I like that they addressed what happened with with Sarah, and they did it right away. And it was like we're not going to drag this out five, six episodes. Mm -hmm. Here it is. We're going to put our cards on the table. And and you know, and they dealt with it. Well, they started to deal with it. Okay, so episode three, the thing in the mines. Right. So this episode begins with Superman falling out of the sky, crash landing after being caught off of his game. The headaches are getting progressively worse. Mm -hmm. And trying to hone in on the signal from the mines is actually debilitating him. Right. So you know, go ahead. One of the things I thought was like, man, what what is if Superman gets a headache? What is that like? Because, like, Tylenol would have no effect on him. So how can he? How can he remedy the headache? Yeah, if he hasn't made something at the Fortress of Solitude, or like, you know, like, would it would it have like a small, like, sprinkle of kryptonite in it to like make it effect? You know, like, could be. Well, or you know what? Maybe he could go to Martian Manhunter, and Martian Manhunter could like turn the headache off. Right. Yeah. I guess that's so, what I, I think. think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they could share Oreo cookies. <laughs> You think Martian Manhunter would share though? That's probably that's not. the question. <laughs> you like, listen, I fix your headache, get lost. <laughs> Don't you have somebody to save? Yeah. So we see another theme that we're seeing is kind of this rift developing between Superman and the military. So he can't really go to them for help trying to figure out what's happening in the mines. Right. So he decides to take John with him. Right. So um, now the situation with Sarah at the same time, we get more on that. Um, things are kind of spinning around here. And we learned that Jordan is left to contemplate whether he should tell. Wait, wait a minute. I'm a little mixed up here. Jordan is is wondering whether to tell um, her about his powers. Yeah, he wants to. And, yeah. And Clark is like, oh, absolutely not. Right, not yet. And he's not, like, but I'm in love with her. And he's like, you're 15. Get, you know, control yourself. Right. And he's, well, and he's right. Like, he, yeah, he's right. I mean, you know, that's again. way too early to go making a life change, a life altering decision like that. Yes. Usually, I mean, you know, high school romances, statistically, they don't really last. So, right. yeah, he, you know, at 15, and again, not able to really you know, process all of your emotions, especially when you're going through that stage of life. All, emotions are hot and volatile. Right. Clark's like, no, you may feel that way and you may be sure of that, but you're basically changing her life and the life of all the people around her if you yeah. tell her that. Right. Like it doesn't just affect you and her. It then spills over to now she's got to keep, she has the burden of also at 15 years old of um, of keeping his secret. 
So they get into an argument outside of the house, and Jordan actually mentions that he loves her so much that he wants her. He wants to marry her. Yeah, I mean that's a little overboard. Yeah. Yeah. Now Clark, again, he's having some neurological difficulties, which is affecting the way that he kind of snaps at people. He's having these like floods of emotions, and he actually says, "You know, no, you don't," with kind of this evil growl. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we're seeing that, you know, everybody's a little wary of him right now, even Lois, because he's doing some things out of character. He's being influenced by some outside force. Yeah. yeah. Now, Jordan isn't the only one. And I actually like just to just to Go ahead. Um, 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 uh, um, I actually like that you like you see like the effects of Superman like, like going that the wrong probably the wrong word but a little bit berserk mm -hmm. and having to like control that in ways that he won't hurt his family like he's gonna always it just shows you how always um, um, present and you know, conscious of these things, he has to be. But like, it shows you the hardship of being Superman. So I always have to be mindful of, you know, I have to make sure I'm in control. Otherwise, the, the consequences are, are, are... Could be devastating and long-reaching. Yeah. Yes. Catastrophic, yes. right? Yes. So as Jordan is having <coughs> problems with Sarah, we learn that Jonathan's girlfriend, Candace, is actually selling drugs and not just selling drugs to anyone. She's selling drugs to the, the other player on the football team who Jonathan is kind of fighting for playing time. Right. And so she's like, you know, if, by the way, if you want to compete with him, you need to buy drugs and use them too. Right. So that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> and especially the type of drug it is. It's not just, yes. not that any drug is a good, you know, I'm not advocating drug use at all. Right. But, uh, but. Well, this is a special kind of nasty. This is like the synthesized, yeah, uh, uh, K, kryptonite, the gold, what was it? Uh, what was it, the black? Yes. Black K, was it called? Mm -hmm. Yes. From, from last season? Mm hmm Well, and, but they. I like the way that they framed it too, because they framed it with like, you know, kind of this, you know, the verbal net that a drug dealer would use of, oh, by the way, you know, I know you want this thing. And if yeah. you want this thing, you know, this, you know, playing time and all the adulation that comes with, you know, being a starting football player, you've got to take what I have. Yeah. You know, you can't be who you want to be without this. Right. And that, again, that's especially dangerous. So, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm glad they found a way. You know, within the confines of, you know, all this fantastical, like, superhero like, sci-fi stuff, to yeah. also boil it down to the message they're trying to, or, or the topic they're trying to confront. Like it, it, it felt very, um, very true to the problem, to the issue, but also adding that super heroic slash sci-fi element to it. It was a good balance of of the two situations. So again, we mentioned elections early on. Lana is kind of having mixed feelings about her ability to do this. She wants yeah. to help the town, but she's not sure that she's cut out for this. At the same time, Sarah kind of mm -hmm. confides in her what happened at camp. Yeah. And so, you know, she's having difficulties like processing, and I, I mean this as as in Sarah, what happened at camp with right. feelings that she still has for Jordan. And so right. her mother is trying to help her through that at the same time, deal with this very complicated mayoral election. So, Yeah, things are difficult for Lana, and uh, it doesn't help matters that the, the, the current mayor, her opponent, is you know trying to dig up dirt on, on her family to kind of potentially use to his advantage. Yes. Now, 
So we also get a continuation of some of the family strife outside. And I mean this with for Lois, her family before Clark. Uh, yeah. She's having some difficult. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we see that Sam is back in town and Lois has a heart to heart talk with him about how she's been feeling. Mm-hmm. And of course, this old article comes back up about that Lois wrote, and it's very complicated, and it it is influencing the way people are seeing her now. And there's a lot of questions about her sources, and of course, she can't reveal everything, right? Because she has to keep some. There are things like Clark's identity that would be dangerous if she would name all of her sources, right? What did you think about that part of the story? How that's I, I, I love how again I love how this show really makes use of you know it's called Superman and Lois and they both have their own situation adventure issue that they have to deal with throughout the season sometimes they converge you know, as they should, but also there there, there are separate storylines for both of them, and I like that. They both equally get the focus, as they should, with a show titled Superman and Laws. Right. And so, yeah, so you have these, you know, three kind of divergent things going on right now. You have the thing in the minds, the mayoral election, as well as, you know, Lois worrying about the story here. And, And I think all of these are interesting. I don't mind, you know, the high school drama as kind of the garnish here. Yeah, yeah. But I like that we have separate stories going outside right. of that. Yeah. So, it, to me, it's all about the balance of how, like, how they allow screen time to it. And so far, they've done a very good job of, of balancing the three. So at this point, Clark eventually heads down to the mines, and he ends up having a battle with this creature that we don't completely see at this point. Mm-hmm. And it comes crashing out into the open. And uh, John is there, too, to help out a little bit. We get a glimpse of who this creature is. Part of the, the the mask part, the head part of the suit is ripped off. And we see that it actually isn't Doomsday. It is that, not. It is not. It's actually Tyler Hecklin playing another character. And he has bl- glowing blue eyes and his face is kind of deteriorated and so it's somebody different than who we thought it was going to be uh, yeah he, he's i mean we could just say it because if you're watching this you've probably seen the episode yes so, uh, so it was none other than um uh bizarro bizarro yes he hasn't named himself yet he hasn't spoken yet but well this, he, yeah. sa- he says something yeah and yeah, yeah, he did say something, but yeah, I don't think he he didn't say Bizarro and he didn't do the Bizarro speak yet. I no, don't no, think. what ha- I, no, what happened was I don't know if you noticed, but I've done some digging, mm-hmm. and thanks to the Superman homepage, they kind of played it back and revealed what he said. Okay, he, he basically said, "Leave me alone," but backwards. Ah, okay. So, so. so their take on Bizarro is not basically. Talk like an overgrown baby, but mean the opposite of what you say. He literally speaks backwards. Speaks in reverse. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's the kind of information you get right here on this podcast. Adam did his homework for you. So, right. Kudos to you, man. Well, Superman homepage did most of the work. I just found the information and relate it. So I got to give credit to them. All right. I I give credit where credit is due. Right. Right. So at the same time, eventually we see that Jordan, that Sarah comes clean with Jordan and she tells him what happened at camp. He's still in love with her, though. Yeah. So for the time being, it seems like they have worked things out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Just an aside, uh, Mm -hmm. because I I saw how they were. I think it was this episode uh, or maybe it was the episode before. I don't know. They got all jumbled. But anyway, um, the. Uh, Sarah and Natalie were working on Sarah's car or Sarah's father's car and it seemed like there were there was some you know 
possible sparks going to happen there. Not because of the car, but because of... Right, yeah. They kind of set that up. I wondered if that was going that way. So now how ca- now what if... How would Jordan feel about losing to his sort of, but not really sister? Oh, ouch. I, would, I don't know. That would be complicated. <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, that would be quite the, the dynamic. But it doesn't seem that way for right now. It yeah, seems for like, right yeah. now he's good. But yes. All is well in Smallville. So. For right now, yeah. I'm yeah. betting it won't stay that way. No, not 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 likely. So speaking of, like one the of Leafs the thing- were on a six-game winning streak, and now they're not. So yeah, let's, let's, what, what, let's, I, what I what I mean is, all good things eventually clearly come to them. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I could go off on another tangent right now, but it's sports related. Let's not do that. So anyway, mm-hmm. all right. So uh, Jonathan again uh, goes to Candace, and instead of trying to talk her out of you know selling the drugs or you know, trying to tell her, hey, don't at least don't sell to, you know, my rival on the football team. He's like, yeah, maybe I do need to use that. Yeah, he's like, give me some of that. Yeah. yeah, he's like, give me some. So that's not good. Absolutely not. Um, you know, and he takes it and we see we see the ramification or the or the the um results of that. Which so is, as this yeah. episode is up, go ahead, sir. No, no, you, we'll we'll bring those up in the next. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Well, you know, I mean, it's your show, you know. <laughs> no, we'll bring them up when we get to the next episode because that's what I mean, happens. That's right. You know, you're the host. I'm the star. So. <laughs> so as this episode is, we're gonna coming, have a talk when this show ends. That's <laughs> <pretty nice. laughs> exactly. I'm getting a cut in my pay of monopoly money. So. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> So, as this episode ends, we see that Lois is a ama- is awaiting a meeting with her sister Lucy, as well as we see the the doppelganger Superman Bizarro get away and arrive at the fortress. So, he shall just, we? Yeah. Any more thoughts on he that? This ep- looks so good. Like this rendition of Bizarro looks amazing. I and can't I, believe the, the the kind of things they are doing on this show with a TV budget. And I love the fact that it it looks like you know a, a a mangled, distorted version of Tyler Hecklin. Yep. Um, you know, uh, I just it just uh, yeah. I will discuss it more as we talk about the next episode. But yeah, uh, you know the. The look, the what they're able to do on the on, on a TV budget, astounding. And I've got to say, I really like the like the head movements yeah. and the the it's the awful. little like like ticks that Tyler Hecklin is doing as Bizarro. A little bit Frankensteinish. Mm-hmm. To seem as kind of like a corrupted Superman. Yeah, yeah. A- as opposed to like you're saying, you know, uh, you know, an overgrown baby Superman who, yeah. you know, refers to himself as, you know, me Bizarro or ya 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 something yeah, like, you know, yada yada yada. So, God, I'm glad yeah. they've gone this like where he actually speaks backwards. Yes. Because when I when I read the comics with Bizarro in it, and it's like me and and I gotta read that. I, I you know, and it's like it gives me a headache. Like there was one issue where. There was one storyline. It was remember when uh, Matt Wagner did the Trinity thing, where it was Batman and Superman, and one of them was a, a three issue thing. Yes. Well, Bizarro's in that in that storyline, and he teams up with Ra's al Ghul, or Ra's al Ghul, depends on whoever, whichever version of it you like uh, to pronounce it. Uh, if you do the the Chris Nolan version or the Denny O'Neill version, there you right. go. I've, I've I, heard I, them both. <laughs> I've heard them both. But anyway. So he's talking about, you know, Raish slash Raz, and I didn't know this. As I'm reading, I'm just reading, and he's talking about Racer. He calls him Racer Cool. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm reading, and I'm like, who? <laughs> who the, you know, <laughs> is, 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 is he talking about? And like five pages later, I'm like, because Raz Raish appears on the page, and I'm like, Oh no, I get it. But it was like five pages later. It's like Jesus, man. <laughs> like, what do I gotta have a degree to read back to to understand this 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 childlike uh, 
nonsensical speak that was all that. So I, I much prefer, look, he's talking backwards. I literally can't understand what he's saying, and I'm fine with it. Right. But it's beautiful because it doesn't have to come out of my mouth. And my brain doesn't have to process what, what, I'm, what I'm saying. That's Tyler Hecklin's problem, and he's getting yeah. paid big bucks to do that. So good and on this, him. I, I didn't think that you could take a more kind of realistic approach with Bizarro, but the way they're doing it, yeah. I think, is, yeah. is genius. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so episode four, The Inverse Method. And this was a really interesting episode because oh, yeah. a lot of it centered around Lucy being in kind of a cult. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not, look, look, I sympathize with people that are actually, were actually susceptible to cults. Yeah. But I'm laughing about a different cult, which most rational, rational, rational I can't talk. Rational DC fans deal with on a daily basis on this yeah. app called Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And while I we was had... waiting for one of the cultists in that group to, to talk about something about a global phenomenon. I was, I was, <laughs> I was like, somebody utter that phrase, please. Right. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons we had to turn the comments off here because we were getting comments about things that had nothing to do with the podcast that we were actually producing. So, which is the yeah. case with the yeah. thing. But anyway, yeah. tell us about this cult that Lucy's in. Well, this this episode it does a really good job at kind of digging into the you know the minutia of cults and how like terrifying they are. So mm -hmm. we watch the cult leader, that's Allie, manipulate her followers uh, using phrases like "find your truth." and telling them that they're actually like the best people in the world and you know very much cult like you know rhetoric you're the ones that have to be the change you're the ones that have to go out there and make the world see the truth right it, it, it's it was really it's fascinating because it's like you see these people and, and like they seem like good natured people but they're they're just because of circumstances in their life where their life is extremely difficult they they fall into the, the under the prey of, of people that that, that that will manipulate them and it's just it, it was it, it was done really well to to show you the sort of struggle and the, the, how how much they are preyed on well cults inevitably they fill some kind of hole mm -hmm. that not everyone may know is there within themselves, some kind of like psychological crack that a cult yeah. is able to, you know, find and exploit. And in this case, we see that a lot of people have fallen under Allie's spell and she's making Lois out as the bad guy and doing a pretty good job of it. She's even able to, at this point, it seems, kind of persuade uh, Chrissy that Lois is someone of spotty character. Yeah. And, you know, that is especially dangerous to Lois. So. Yeah, it, yeah. it was, it was, um, I, I, I thought there was some, a lot of, like a re really powerful acting between Lois and Lucy in the hotel room. I, I thought it was very, very powerful between the two ladies. They, they both did a good job. Uh, both, uh, Jenna D1 uh, playing Lucy again, and uh, and Bitsy Tulloch playing uh, Lois, of course. And this is a, as good of an opportunity as any, Donnie, to uh, okay. <laughs> uh, reiterate that, of course, Bitsy Tulloch is on the list. But in, in case I haven't said this before, because we usually don't cover Supergirl on this, this channel, but Jenna D1 who plays Lucy, is on the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so another thing we see in this episode is that this kind of psychic connection that right. Bizarro and Superman have, it's not just affecting Superman. Bizarro is having visions too. Right. Because he's, we, he's yeah, seeing we, what Superman is seeing. Yeah. Yes. Because we see them clash again, and we see that, you know, Bizarro is having a, a difficult time when he's close to Superman. It seems that the visions are, like, more intense when they're close to one another. Yeah, it's like, it's like 
you know you know they say when they when they have um <clears throat> clones or or alternate universe versions of a person mm-hmm. and, and the, the rule is like both cannot occupy the same space for too long right right that's the kind of scenario that they're playing on here so at the same time, we get uh, another storyline that is continuing <clears throat> to get darker, and that is uh, Lana's uh, election race. We find out that the current mayor is trying to dig up things on her family, yeah. including Sarah's attempted suicide, yeah. and that that may become kind of a political football, which obviously Lana does not want that. Yeah, and neither does Kyle, and that right. angers Kyle. Yeah, uh, a, a lot, and that's that's another thing that I wonder how that's going to play out because Kyle seems to not always be in control of himself, and it's understandable as a dad, somebody threatens right. your kid, and but he seems like he can he he's kind of he's at the point to where if somebody says the wrong thing or does the wrong thing, he could lash out physically. So, oh yeah, and the worst case scenario too is he'll find himself susceptible to. Um, uh, uh, yeah, a legal entanglement for to, like yeah, no, no, to, no. Well, he seems to, you know, turn to alcohol, right? That's well, his, right? well, that as well. Yeah, yeah we've right. seen that. And so. then, and then, of course, it's revealed at the end of the episode that uh, he uh, has been unfaithful. Yeah. To to Lana, uh, which is going to be very interesting. Because, well, before we get to that, I should say that the interesting, I thought, development as far as Sarah's character goes is that when they told her about maybe it, you know, kind of coming out that she had a suicide attempt, she was like, okay, you know what, bring it on. She's like, it happened, but I'm going to deal with it. So, and I like that. I like that. We see some, yeah, some maturity out of her there. A lot of character progression, a lot of maturity. Yeah, I like that. I dig how she handled that. So that's where we are right now, still in the thick of the election. Superman dealing with Bizarro, obviously Lois dealing with the cult. Both of the boys having very complicated relationship issues. I really like what they've set up so far this season. And Mm -hmm. we'll be here to start covering it again when it comes back on February the 22nd. Yeah, we'll probably stick with our our format of doing uh, multiple episodes at once like this. But, you know, it's just easier that way. Um, because if we did this week by week, then we'd never get to some of the other stuff. So it's better right. to let a couple of episodes build and then and then cover it. Um, uh, interesting thing, though, um, um, Donnie, that I want to mention mm-hmm. about about a couple of things with Bizarro. First of all, did you notice? That pendant on his oh yeah neck. The, yeah the necklace yeah yeah what do you make of that well, well, well I, I'll, I'll phrase it as a form of a question okay uh, do you think um, it has something to do with the Phantom Zone oh it very well could wasn't it like it was made of some kind of energy like his breath or something. Now that I think about it, I meant to go back and watch that part again. If his breath is that dark, like produces something that dark, he needs a toothbrush. Well, it was yeah, it was something like that, some kind of like energy harnessed within yeah. it. So, I mean, yeah, obviously it has some kind of connection to that. So, like, could they could they change it up and instead of him being on a a square world instead of a round Earth, mm-hmm. could he be? Could could his home be the Phantom Zone? It's difficult to say. That's that's as uh, as much it, in the air are, as anything. These are some things I've heard fans speculating about, so I wanted mm-hmm. to bring them up. Um, also, it's worth noting the fight sequence between Bizarro and those three kids that the government is has in the Superman jacket. Right. Yeah, and then Superman versus Bizarro. That look th- th- those fights look stunning. Right. Like, yeah. Forgot to mention them, but that that's kind of a classic like DC story template is the government, some form of some government, trying to form versions of heroes, and that never goes well. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 especially because they're teenagers and they, and they they don't have control of this power mm-hmm. of theirs. Um, 
But um, and only one of them was left alive at the end of this episode, yeah, yeah. if I remember correctly. All, yeah, the two of them. Which again, it shows you how, like, a lot of the times in in comic books and cartoons, Bizarro is played off as a bumbling, you know, a, a moron, a child, a, a misunderstood, lovable, childish moron. That's how he's portrayed. Here, like, you mess with this character, and you know, you may not come out the other side of it um, mm-hmm. uh, as evident but the, but the, the first of like the the final like the first real uh, like the, with with do with bizarro being revealed as bizarro the first real showdown between superman and bizarro was fantastic like visually yeah. mm-hmm. donnie it looked like a movie like speaking to what you were saying about how, it's amazing what they're doing on this budget like i see no difference to this and what a movie would look like which yeah. again, it echoes my my plea to you know whether it be the J.J. Abrams produced movie or the Val Zod series, whichever comes first regarding Superman. Be mindful of the budget, like mm-hmm. what these fight scenes in Superman and Lois have shown me. And I think everybody watching is that you don't need to spend $250 million to make a good looking Superman film. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, depend. I know some people don't like it, but Shazam, right? Regardless of what some may think of the movie, whether you like it or don't like it, you can't argue that for a hundred million dollars, that thing looked fantastic. The, the oh yes. Yeah. Visuals, the fights. So, mm-hmm. To me, there is this like like the next what I if I'm the keepers of the next installment of the Superman film franchise, I'm looking at Superman and Lois and saying, "All right, they're doing that on a six million dollar budget. Mm-hmm. We have no excuse to ridiculously overspend." Okay? And again, I'm not saying make a Superman movie for seventy five million dollars. I'm saying you can make a pretty damn good looking Superman movie for a hundred to one hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the the fight scenes that we see. Again, we're talking about, you know, an episodic television show here. So they're shorter than what we would see in the movie a lot of times. But if you extrapolate what they're doing here yeah. out to a movie budget, yeah. no, you don't need to spend 250 or $300 million. Like you to can me, do it on less. 220, I've always said it, $225 million, and I don't care who the director is. It, it has nothing towards the... Ne- negativity towards a certain director, but to me, you don't like if you're spending 225 movie on, on a, a solo Superman mm-hmm. film, and a couple of years later when things get more expensive, Aquaman is spending 160 million dollars. Somewhere there's a problem there, right? I don't know who's at fault, but there, there's a problem. So, and I get it, Superman and Lois, the fights are shorter, but still. They've got six million dollars. Right. That's a big difference than two twenty-five, and it looks just about the same. And Aquaman looked like more expensive than some other movies that I've seen that actually did have more expensive budgets. Yeah. And Aquaman, every like again, they had to CGI his hair, not because he doesn't have hair, but because to make it flow in the water and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they're spending, they're CGIing just about everything, short of Jason Momoa and the actors physically being there, like on the set, on the blue screen. I venture to say that 90%, 95% of what we're seeing, besides the, the actors themselves, is CGI. And it, it just boggles my mind that, that it ended up being cheaper than Man of Steel. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to call out the movie, but, and I like, and I love. A borderline love man of steel, with the exception of a couple things here and there. But I, I just think it was too overbloated of a budget. And, and Superman and Lost is proving that, you know, the next guy should, whoever directs the next Superman movie, should, should keep an eye on Superman and Lost and say, well, if they can do that for six million, I can do a big budget movie for a hundred and something as opposed uh, yeah. to 225. So I would agree. Take the lessons from this show 
and it's not just in visual effects. It's character portrayal. You know, bo borrow a lot, quite a bit of from this show if you can, because I think they're they're firing on all cylinders right now. Mm -hmm. So should we go ahead and, and rate this batch of three episodes? Yes, by all means. So are we doing letter grades? It's live action, but it's TV. So are we doing uh, letter grade or out of ten? How do you want to? Let's let's do letter grades. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Uh, I'm going to give it an A minus. Um, okay. Not a lot more that I could say that I wanted. You know, a couple yeah. little areas. Um, like I said, you know, the the Jordan situation could have got a little bit more development, but we're going to get that later on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what they have set up is brilliant here. So I'm waiting to find out some answers to some key questions. But like you, I think this show is has set up a great part of the mythos for Superman. You know, there some people like to question about whether, you know, Superman still has a place in, in like this huge pantheon of pop culture heroes. There are so many with like huge successful movie franchises. This shows you how this shows you how well Superman, the soul of Superman, can be translated and put on the small screen. Yeah. So first, let me just say, let me speak to what you just said. But first, sure. my rating on the three episodes is an A. I, okay. I, 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 I really love them. I, I have virtually no problems with them. So it's an A. Um, now, what you're saying about the viability of Superman and, and his place, sort of, you know, because there have been some questions being asked with, you know, Superman Returns and Man of Steel not performing to the level that the studio expected. Um, you know, is Superman relevant? Like, do people care? And, and all you got to do is look at Superman and Lois and, and the, the ratings. It's the highest rated show this season on the CW. This, to me, tells me that when you portray, again, the wording, maybe, I don't want to say property, but when you give audiences a Superman they're familiar with and a version of the character that they, that is, that is ingrained in the general assumption of what Superman is and should be, people will come along for the ride. Hmm. Now, I'm not saying... Again, that that me saying that doesn't mean Man of Steel is not Superman, or BVS is not Superman, or whatever. All I'm saying is that that take where, you know, and I'm not again. I'm not saying the solution is just copy and paste the Christopher Reeve version, because that's not what I'm saying. If you actually watch Superman and Lois. It's not a copy and paste of the Christopher Reeve version, but what they, what I think they do better than what the the, the last three su movies involving Superman did was show a Superman that once you get done watching a, an episode or a scene, it evokes hope, even though the main character is dealing with a crap ton of problems, like like Superman and Superman and Lois. Is dealing with a lot. Mm -hmm. But somehow, at the end of each friggin' episode, or the last time he appears on screen, I'm hopeful that he's going to figure it out and things are going to get better. Mm -hmm. I can't say that on the film side. Like, at the end of Superman Returns, we're left with, okay, he knows he's got a kid, but can he really interact with that kid? Because Lois is, is engaged to uh, Cyclops, and so, is the next movie going to be a court case with Judge Judy and oh, gosh. And, and friggin' uh, Maury Povich doing a DNA <laughs> tests? Like, what are we doing here in this sequel? And then, you know, in, in, in Man of Steel, he's figuring out his place in the world, which is fine for an origin story. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of Man of Steel, they give you the hope of, hey, hey welcome to the planet. Yeah, glad to be here. And he's grinning from year to year. And then in BBS... Nobody likes me. I got to look like I'm constipated for three quarters of this movie. <laughs> and the only time we see Superman being Superman is, well, so I got to sacrifice myself now because, you know, I'm the only one that can stop. Like, 
why I, the, 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 so to me it's all in the in the in the execution and, and to me that's therein lies the issue that that, that I think general audiences have had with Superman in, in terms of the movies because again the actors portraying them whatever the case may be whatever they're going whatever is going on in their personal life but on television Superman has seen has seemed to do better with the perception of the audience than he has on film and I think that's because filmmakers are are trying to put Superman in this we gotta here's our take on Superman here's our our spin and they're they're trying to alter the character too much from what he is and that's therein lies the problem I think well, and you can tell a lot of different types of Superman stories at this right. point with a character that's been around that long. What we saw, and, and by the way, I'm not like negative about the, the DC Extended Universe. In fact, Man of Steel is my favorite yeah. Superman movie. Right. However, that is a type of kind of more detached, the sentinel protector of yeah. humanity. Okay. This, what we're seeing on Superman and Lois, I think is resonating with people because it's Superman the dad. And they're yeah. accentuating that part. But it's also, the, I, you're right, but it's also, I think, it's a more recognizable, palatable Superman to, the, to them than what the DCEU has offered to this point. Like, they can look at that and think, yeah, that's the Superman I remember. Right. Whether, whether their frame of reference is George Reeve, Chris Reeve, Dean Cain, whatever, it still has that similar, it's different, but it has that general similarity to, like, this is my comfort food Superman, right? That's a good way to put it. When yeah. you try and go off the beaten road and deconstruct him, like Man of Steel and BVS were trying to do, some of the audience, you know, doesn't want that. Right, yeah. Or they don't want it for an extended period. Again, for his origin, when he's trying to figure out, hey, what's my place in the world? I get it. Yeah. But when you get into the second and third film and... He's doing mostly the same things, and there doesn't seem like a heck of a whole lot of character growth. Audience are gonna say, "Well, like, like, why do I need to get to three? Why do I need to wait to three, potentially five? You know, if, you know, if if they go according to the to the arc, the you know, the director's vision, why do I have to wait five films for Superman to act like Superman? Mm -hmm. Or the, in the general audience mind, to the Superman I remember. That's the issue. Right. So it, it, it's just, look, adapt, look at the character, find the core essential elements of the character. You can you can tell a, a unique story around that, but don't veer off the beaten path too much, i.e. see Captain America, like the movies. Like they brought him up in a darker world, but Captain America was still the embodiment of what people expect from Captain America. And that's why those were successful. So yeah. I think there's a lot that can be taken in terms of reference and inspiration from Superman and Lois when the next movie comes around. Well, All valid points. Yeah. So we'll see. But but Superman and Lois is, is nailing it. And that's why I'm not overtly in a rush for them to bring out a movie now because we need Superman on the big screen. I'm getting good Superman on TV. I'm fine. As long as I'm, look, to me, outside of the comic books, when we're talking about other media, other mediums, my stance is, as long as I'm getting a strong, respectful version of one of my favorite characters in another form of media, whether it be TV, movies, or animation, I'm good. I don't care the format of it. Again, whether it's a big screen, small screen, mm -hmm. or in a cartoon form, I don't care as long as it's good. And right now, Superman and Lois is scratching my Superman itch outside of the comic books. That's a good point. So, I, I'm not going to be, well, yeah, this is good, but where's my movie? And then pout and, and, and start my feet <laughs> and, and, and any of that garbage. Because I just want the character respected, and right now he is being respected on Superman and Lois. So I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, but we will be back uh, yes. in the next couple of episodes to talk more Superman Law. So stay tuned. Um, and uh, if you want to talk Superman Law with us 
on social media, you can. So, Donnie, where, where do they track you down? You can find me on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's talk Superman and Lois. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern. And if you want to talk to me about Superman and Lois or any of his other surrounding characters or anybody else in the DC universe, you can. At Adam underscore Leafs fan on Twitter. Even Ambush Bug? I mean, you could talk about him. I don't know if I could carry on the conversation with you, but go ahead. Really, what I want to talk about is Butterball from this. You know, <laughs> I thought you were getting ready to say Nort. I was like, here we go. <laughs> oh, him too. I mean, well, why not? <laughs> Where's my Nort miniseries? <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, I'm going to boycott DC films if they don't put Nort in a movie. You know what? I, I like the Green Lantern fandom so much. If they made a Nort movie, I would watch it for them to review it for them. Of course you would. I, I wouldn't you. like it, but I'd not <laughs> watch it. I know you would. <laughs> I know you would. But yeah, so talk about Nort with me at Adam underscore Lee's fine. And I'll tag Donnie in that conversation because I know he loves Nort. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, <laughs> you know, uh, the uh, podcast network has a, a social media account as well, at MMNPDC. <laughs> we have a Facebook group, which the link is in the description somewhere below where I'm pointing. Um, click that, join the group. I'll add you. We can continue the conversation there. <laughs> um, but until next time, remember that Superman and Lois is forever. From the first time Superman and Bizarro throw down to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone. <laughs>